Magnetic switch keyboards are the new hotness. Basically every keyboard hitting the market towards the end of 2024 and now at the start of 2025 is mag switch equipped, but why? What's so special about these things that's making everyone and their dog build and buy them? Well, if you'll permit an analogy, picture a controller. Xbox or PlayStation, you decide. Uh, I've got a Wolverine V3 Pro, so I'll use that. A regular mechanical keyboard switch are like the ABXY and bumpers. An on-off switch. Either it's pressed and active, or it isn't. On or off. These magnetic switches are much more like the joysticks or triggers. They can be on a little, on a lot, or anywhere in between. Why would you want that though? Well, knowing how far the switch has been pressed down means that you can do a lot of interesting things. The most common features to find on these boards relate to the actuation point. Going back to the controller analogy, for FPS games that use the triggers to aim and shoot, sometimes you can change how far down the trigger you have to press before the gun fires. That's the same as these switches. How far down you have to press the W key to start walking forward, for example. For gaming, you might find that you want to just barely press on them to trigger for the fastest reactions and the, the snappiest movements, but maybe for typing you might want to drop it down so that you have to push them down most of the way so that you don't mistype. With a mechanical switch, how far down you need to press is fixed by the metal contacts inside the switch, but with magnets, well, you get to change that and on the fly too. That adjustable actuation point can also be adjusted instantaneously with a feature that's normally called a rapid trigger. This basically moves the actuation point to some fixed distance below the current switch position. That basically means even as you start to lift your finger off, if you push, start pressing back down again, even halfway down the travel, the switch will trigger again. This is mostly useful for strafing in games like CS and Valorant, or if you're mad enough to play racing games with a keyboard, but it's a feature that you absolutely could not have without these switches. One other benefit to knowing how far down the travel you are is that you don't actually have to have a single actuation point. A lot of keyboards, this glorious GMMK3 HE included, have a multi-action feature built in, which lets you map, well, multiple actions to a single key, depending on how far down you press it. The common examples here are with the W key, where if you just lightly press it, you just walk slowly, but fully pressing it down means that you sprint, meaning you don't need to hold shift as well. Or the other common example is building in Fortnite, where with a single key press, you can open the build menu, build a wall or stairs, and then close the build menu. Pretty handy, right? There are some other benefits and features that these sorts of boards offer, but you've heard about those benefits, but how the hell does the keyboard know where the magnet is? Well, that's where the HE in most of these boards' names come in. HE stands for Hall Effect, and this is the phenomenon where magnets induce a voltage in circuits just by being nearby. These Hall Effect sensors, the tiny black chips that you see on this PCB here, have a voltage induced in them from the magnets in the bottom of the switches that are nearby, and turn that voltage into a signal that the keyboard can use to tell how far along the travel the magnet is. The closer the magnet, the larger the voltage, and therefore the stronger the signal. It's really pretty genius, and these sensors aren't exactly expensive. Even at consumer prices, you're talking like 50p per switch, which to be fair is a lot more than a hot swap socket and way more than just soldering the, the uh, you know, switches in, but for this much more functionality, well, I can see the value. The other benefit to just needing a tiny little sensor on the PCB itself rather than a pinned connection is that these switches are completely separate from the PCB. They don't even have 
pins and sockets, they are completely free floating, which means you can much more easily make them hot swappable. And because the switch is, well, it's actually just a magnet embedded in the stem itself, and therefore it's just the stem, the case, and a spring, there's basically nothing to wear out and fail here. Mechanical switches have a springy bit of metal built in, the actual switch parts, and that wears out over time, eventually failing, and if it gets dirty it can be buggy and that can be annoying. These magnet switches have no contact parts and no switch mechanism to fail, so should be considerably more reliable. Now, you might have heard about a new kind of magnetic switch, or actually more likely in joystick form, called TMR. That stands for tunneling magnetoresistance and is a pretty similar effect to HE, although it works slightly differently and generally uses a different plane than Hall effect sensors. But the key thing here is that TMR sensors are generally more sensitive, more accurate, and especially for battery power devices, they generally consume less power too. Now, this isn't going to magically double the battery life of your controller or TMR keyboard, but it should make at least a little bit of a difference. The downside right now is cost. Hall effect sensors have been around for decades, and as I mentioned earlier, are readily available at commodity pricing, whereas TMR sensors are more rare and therefore generally command a higher price tag. There are some devices that use TMR sensors already. In fact, I've got a TMR keyboard on the way that I'll be taking a look at in the next couple weeks, so do stay tuned for that one. But beyond that, GoogleKit offer TMR joysticks that you can retrofit into your existing controllers and consoles. For the most part though, magnetic switches, be that HE or TMR, offer a considerably better feature set than mechanical switches, and especially thanks to companies like Glorious, offering not just plain linear switch types, but like actual tactile, and yes, even clicky switches, there's no better time to get a magnetic keyboard. I know I am, in fact, this one in fact. Anyway, that is how magnetic keyboards work, and the difference between HE and TMR sensors. I suspect HE will reign supreme for keyboard due to the magnetic alignment and cost. A full size 104 key keyboard needs 104 sensors versus 4 for a controller, or maybe 6 if you include the triggers too. But for battery powered devices like controllers, I think TMR will take over pretty quickly. Of course, those are my thoughts on that. I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. And let me know what you think about TMR and HE uh, in general. Are you interested in ATR and HE or magnetic keyboard? Let me know in the comments down below. I will leave a link to this glorious board in the description if you're interested and a few of the other ones that I've reviewed recently. And if you want to check out more videos like this one, including the review of this glorious board, check out those uh, on the end cards. Hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon, especially if you want to see that TMR keyboard reviewed. And yeah, otherwise, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you all in the next video.